collision. Inelastic collision in one dimension. An inelastic collision is one in which the kinetic energy of the system of colliding bodies is not conserved. One dimensional collision okay, is one dimensional. V1, I, M1, M2, V2, I, initial. Okay, And then they hit together. After that, they move this direction. Why is this, this direction? We assume. Now, if we get a number is a negative number, that means its real motion is going back. Okay. Anyway, we assume all move forward. Okay. Now in this case, this beside these two matter, nothing has happened. So we see F net is equal to zero. In other words, the linear momentum P of this system is constant. P1 I plus P2 I initial equal to P1 final plus P2 final final state. Okay, this is a linear momentum that always conserved, whether energy is conserved or not. We write this one. This is a M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial equal m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final ah, that's one equation the kinetic energy that is lost in in any inelastic collision is transferred to some other form of energy perhaps thermal energy sound energy deformation energy nonetheless the linear momentum of the system is always conserved, provided the system is isolated and closed. Since kinetic energy and the linear momentum both involve the speeds of the colliding bodies, so the conservation of linear momentum limits just how much kinetic energy is lost by a system in an inelastic collision. Complete inelastic collision. We have a complete. What does it mean? It means these two collide and they become the one. Okay. After clashing, the body is stick together. Okay. So this is they move together. Okay. We assume V two initial is zero. Okay. Then we see the linear momentum conserved M one V one I linear momentum before collision is equal to they move together m1 plus m2 v so the v equal to m1 over m1 plus m2 v1 initial this is the velocity of center of a core after or before okay after before always does this one okay when the bodies stick together in a completely inelastic collision, the amount of kinetic energy that is lost is the maximum allowed by the conservation of linear momentum. So the, the conservation of linear momentum limited the energy lost. Velocity of center of mass. Look, this is a particle one, particle two. This is the center of mass, you see. The speed of center of mass is always constant because it's isolated system. Okay. F external is zero. Uh, linear momentum can stop. Okay. So we know the P is M V cop equal to M1 plus M1 V cop. Uh, this one is also M1 P1 initial plus P2 initial. Right? So the VCOM, VCOM equal to P over, this is a VCOM, is a P over M1 plus M2. And, and this P is equal to P1 initial plus P2 initial. That's the VCOM. Okay. Now, this is what, okay. now, always constant, okay. unaffected by the collisions.
before Kharishin, after Kharishin, they are the same diversity. This demonstration uses gliders floating on an air track to show two different types of collisions. In the first collision, two identical gliders have spring bumpers which can return to their original shape after being squeezed. When the gliders collide, they exchange velocities. If we turn the gliders around, they will stick together after they collide. After the collision, how will the velocity of the combined gliders compare with that of the first glider? The two gliders together move at half the velocity of the original glider. This device, called a ballistic pendulum, can be used to measure the speed of a flying ball. A spring gun on the base fires a steel ball horizontally. In order to determine the speed of the ball, we'll catch it in the bottom of this pendulum arm. The height of the rise of the center of mass can be used to calculate the original speed of the ball. Here are some sample firings of the ball, first with the spring compressed this far. then with the spring compressed more. And with the spring compressed even more. Sample. The ballistic pendulum was used to measure the speeds of bullets before electronic timing devices were developed. The version show in the figure consists of a large block of wood of mass M, 5.4 kilogram, hanging from two long cords. A bullet of mass M, 5.9.5 gram, is fired into the block, coming quickly to rest. Uh, the block bullet then swing upwards, the center of mass rising a vertical distance h 6.3 cm before the pendulum comes momentarily to rest at the end of the arc. What is the speed of the bullet just prior to the collision? Okay, that's just prior to the collision. Now, we think this one much easier. Mechanic energy conserved. Before is half mv squared. After the head, the high is m plus m, it goes high h together. So this should equal. So very easily, we know h, we can find v. It is right. In this process, mechanical energy conserved or not? We know that one. After but it hit what you will hear the sun, you have sun energy. You will feel the blood was heated. Okay, you have a heat energy disappear, right? Yeah. So apparently mechanical energy in this case does not consult. Then what we do what we do is whatever it is, linear momentum is consult because this is two system external force is zero, right? So the linear momentum console. Before the linear momentum is mv. After they move together is m plus mv. Ah, this is a linear momentum curve. In this process, kin kinetic energy or energy is not conserved, mechanical energy, okay, because you have a heat energy disappear, right? And then after that, these move together. During that course, no other heat, uh, no other energy. So we have energy, mechanical energy conserved. Here, you have velocity together. They move half mv equal to the big mgh. 
Yes. This is a very important process. In this process, hit them. The mechanic engine does not move. After they move together, the mechanic engine conserves the gap. Okay? With these two equation halves, we very easily find the V. Okay? Okay, we find the V. Okay? This is very simple calculus. I'm going to not do it. Okay? We put the number inside. Okay? In, inside. Okay? And uh, very easy to find the V equals 630 meter per second. Elastic collision in one dimension. If the kinetic energy of the system is the same before and after the collision, the collision is then said to be of a special type called elastic collisions. In an elastic collision, the kinetic energy of each colliding body may change, but the total kinetic energy of the system does not change. In a closed, isolated system, the linear momentum of each colliding body may change, but the net linear momentum does not change, regardless whether the collision is elastic or not. Look at the stationary target. Ah, the second target is stationary. V to initial zero. And V1 is approached with V1 initial, final uh, initial. Now, after hit, we still assume this one move forward. It can move back, okay, but we assume it is move forward. Then we write the equation. If we find the answer is a negative number, that means the rear motion is going back, okay? So linear momentum, see that, before the clashing is M1 V1I, this is zero. And linear momentum can solve because it's an isolated, okay, closed system. So equal to linear momentum after clashing. After clashing is M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. Okay. And we have energy conserved. Before halting is half m1 v1 i squ square equal to, after that, both have kinetic energy, half m1 v1 final square plus half m2 v2 final square. Now, these two equations, we can find the v1 final and the v2 final. It's very easy. Now, we move this one over, okay? And half will cancel out. M1, this is M1, or M1 take out. M1 V1I square minus V1 final square will become V1I minus V1 final multiplied by V1I plus V1 final. And this is M2 V2 final. And look at this one. Okay, look at this one. We move this one over because M1 V1 minus V1 final equal to M2 final. And we look at this, this is the same. This is a part of the same. So we divide each other, we find out, okay, V1 I plus V1 final equal to, equal to M2, this equation, okay? So this equation plus this, or linear, it's very easy, we can have two equations. Ah, look at this, the speed of center mass is always constant, okay? before collision and after collision. This answer we got, now let's see this one. Equal mass, M1 unit, after collision, this is zero. This is a two M1, two M1. So V2 final equal to V1I. What does mean? This we call, if mass is equal, they exchange speed. V1 final is zero, actually it's V2 initial, it's, it's still. V2 final equal to V1 exchange, right? So we have, this is zero, okay, this is to the exchange. A massive target, M2 is much larger. M2 is much larger, I can drop this one, and drop this one. This is, okay, minus plus minus, so, V1 final 
equal to minus weaver initial. What does this mean? It goes back with the same speed. Okay? It goes back with the same speed. And the second one, the mass, the mass of take almost move a little bit because this M2 is much larger than M2. It's very small. The third condition is the mass of projectile. M1 is much larger than M2. In this case, we drop this one. M1 of M1. M1 final equal to M1 initial. That means it does not move. It just continue to move. You can, we can match, right? Yeah. And you need the second one. Yeah. The second one, M1 is much larger than 2. This drops. This becomes 2. So M2F is very, leave the very fast double speed. For motion of the center of mass, motion of center of mass, this is P equal to M quam. Okay, okay. So this is a constant. This is a constant. So V quam is a constant. Okay, it's a constant. It's always a constant. These sets of pendulum balls will be used to demonstrate collisions between various masses. Here is a pair of equal mass balls. When we collide one ball with the other, the two balls trade velocities. The incoming ball stops, and the stationary ball flies away at the same speed as the incoming ball. Here's a set of balls with a 3 to 1 mass ratio. When the small ball strikes the larger one, the small ball bounces back and the large ball moves away slowly. What will happen if the last collision is reversed? Now the small ball flies away quickly and the large ball continues in the same direction at a lower speed. Here is a set of balls with an 80 to 1 mass ratio. When the small ball strikes the larger, it bounces back completely while the larger ball hardly moves. Here's what happens when the last collision is reversed. Finally, here is a set of 11 pool balls hung in a row. When we pull back and release one ball, a single ball flies out the other end. If we release a larger number of balls together, the same number flies out the other end. illustrate different types of collisions using gliders floating on a cushion of air. These two gliders have the same mass. They exchange velocities upon collision. What will happen if the stationary glider is heavier than the moving glider? In this case, the lighter glider moves backward after the collision. The heavier glider moves off at a lower velocity than the initial velocity of the lighter glider. What will happen if we switch the glider so that the heavier glider collides with the lighter stationary glider? This time the moving glider continues on the same direction after the collision and the stationary glider flies off at a higher velocity. Now we will try it with the stationary glider of a greater mass. Moving target. Both moving, okay. And we have energy conserved. Half M1 V1 initial square plus half M2 V2 initial square equal to 
half m1 v1 final of square plus half m2 v2 final of square energy cancel and then linear momentum cancel m1 v1 i plus m1 m2 v2 i initial linear momentum equal to uh, final linear momentum m1 v1 final plus m1 m2 v2 final this is a one dimensional so it's not a fact i uh, just kind of scale so let's solve this two equation we can get v2 v1 final and v2 final how we do that? Now we look at this one. We changed location because minus. This is M1, M1, M2, M2. Okay. Same thing. This M1, M1, this M2, M2. We take this out. Okay. Okay. So half cancel out. This M1, V1, final square minus V1. I'm sorry. V1 initial square minus V1 final square. A square minus B square equal to a minus b multiplied by a plus b the same thing happened on the right this is is a a square minus b square equal to a minus b plus a plus b okay. this one we move it take it m1 out this will be m1 v1 initial mother v1 final minus m2 v2 type c we look, we look at this equation, it's different. No, they are the same. They are the same. So we divide it. On the left, we have one turn left. One final plus one final equal to, equal to, this minor cancel out. One two i plus one two final. Ah. So this equation, okay, plus this equation, Two linear, very simple equation. We can find v1 final and v2 final easily. Okay, now these two very easy. Okay. Now we get this answer. Yeah. I don't remember this one because we can very easily get this answer. Okay, now when two balls with the proper mass ratio are dropped together with the lighter ball on top. A very interesting bounce occurs. The heavy ball barely bounces at all, but the lighter ball bounces many times higher than the drop height. Now this is awesome. Notice that the assignment of subscripts A1 and 2 to the body is arbitrary. If we exchange those subscripts, we end up with the same set of equations. Okay. This is this one, the symmetry. Sample. Two metal sphere suspended by vertical cords initially just touch a shoulder swoop. Initially. Okay. With M1, 30 gram is pulled to left to hide H1 8.0 centimeter and then released. Okay. After swimming down, it undergoes an elastic collision with sphere 2, whose mass is 75 gram. What is the velocity V1 final of the sphere 1 just after the collision? I want to find this one. That's an easy one. Okay. Now, which is the energy conservation. The velocity is from here. So the potential energy change, M1 H1 equal to half M1 initial square. Uh, we can find the speed from here. Okay. Uh, I put a number inside. We get 1.252 meter per square. Now, was this one we use the formula? One, this is the one we want to find one final. Okay, we find out this one initial zero. So V2 initial zero. So this is the formula. Okay, we put the number inside, we get a number. Okay, we get a very easy one. Okay, this is minus. What does this mean? What this means is that it bounce back, bounce back. 
collisions in two dimensions. This is two dimensions, not head on, so split in the two directions. Okay. Uh, glancing collision, not head on. V1I, V1 initial, hit this one, equal to V1 along the x direction, I. And the target is zero, V2I is zero. After the hit, they split the two direction. So we have linear momentum conserved both in x direction and y direction. So we split into two. Elastic collision, you have energy conservation, okay? So K1I plus K2I equals K1 final plus K2 final, okay? Now, we do this one. M1 V1I, this is zero, this is zero, equal to M1 V1 final plus, uh, this is this direction, cosine theta one plus V2 final cosine theta 2 is along x direction and along y direction originally is 0 and you have this is m1 v1 final sine theta 1 plus this is m2 v2 final cosine theta 2 okay now plus the elastic energy conservation initial energy plus two kinetic energy, okay? We have three equation, but we have a lot of variable, okay? There's seven variables, okay? You see, V1 initial, V1 final, V2 final, okay? Uh, V1 initial is zero, okay? M1, M2, theta one, theta two, all together you have a six, seven variables. We have three equations. We need four given condition can solve this question. We'll demonstrate two-dimensional collisions using these air table pucks. The pucks have equal mass. We'll have them collide in different ways and watch how they move after the collision. Here is a head-on collision. Lines on the screen will follow both pucks to make their paths visible. This is a collision where the puck strikes slightly off-center. This time the puck strikes even farther off-center. Notice that after an off-center collision, the pucks move off at approximately 90 degrees to each other. We'll use this air table to demonstrate inelastic collisions between pucks floating on an air table. The pucks have Velcro strips around the edge to make them stick together. We'll have them collide in various ways and then watch them after the collision. This pair of pucks has equal mass and collides slightly off center. This is the same pair of pucks colliding farther off center. demonstrate two-dimensional collisions between unequal masses using these pucks floating on an air table. These pair of pucks has a mass ratio of two to one. We'll have them collide in various ways and watch how they move after the collision. Here is a head-on collision. Lines on the screen will follow both pucks to show their paths. Here is a collision slightly off-center. We'll now repeat the two last collisions with the heavier puck running into the lighter puck. Sample. Two skater collides and embrace in a completely inelastic collision. Thus, they stick together after impact as suggested by the figure, where the orange is the place at the point of collision. Alfred, whose mass M8 is 83 kilogram, 
this is a is originally moving east with speed VA 6.2 km per hour this direction Barbara whose mass MB is 55 kg okay, is originally moved north with speed VB 7.8 kg per hour question a what is the velocity V of the couple after they collide that's very simple now, we see this okay is the direction okay y direction before the collision is mbvb after collision is big m v sine theta and this direction before the collision is mava okay and after the collision mv cosine theta we'll find the theta first Okay. We divide this two. Okay, we divide this two. We get a tan in the theta. They cancel out. Equal to mbvb of mava. So we get point a three four. We get theta is about forty degree. Okay. Now we find the velocity. The velocity is vb mbvb over m sine theta. We put the theta inside. We get a number. Okay by 4.9 kilometer per hour. Question B. What is the velocity V come of the center of mass of the two skaters before and after the collision? We know the center of mass velocity is the same. We know after the collision, they move together. This speed is actually the speed of center of mass before and after the collision. This is it. Example, two particles of equal masses have an elastic collision. The target particle B initially addressed show that unless the collision is head on, the two particles will always move off perpendicular to each other after the collision. Now, they move off this angle is perpendicular 90 degree phi is 90 degree prove it now let's see this one m1 equal to m2 to the m so we have linear momentum cancel okay the first one is m1 v1 i the second one is zero is addressed stationary and after closing you have m m v v1 final plus m V2 final, this is the equation. Also, mechanical energy concept. Okay. Half mv1 i initial equal to half mv1 final square plus half mv2 final square. All right? And this equation, we cancel m, cancel half m. We get a two equation. v1 i equal to v1 final plus v2 final. v1 i squared equal to v1 final square plus v2 final. Now let's do see what happening. We 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 square both sides. This become v one i square. This become v one final square plus two v one dot v two final plus v two square. And we compare these two equations. This equal to the term. This equal to equal to term. So this term must be zero. Two vector itself is not equal to zero. Dot equal to zero means cosine theta equal to zero. Theta is 90 degree. They perpendicular. 